Hey guys, what's up? This is Naresh with you again. In this video, we we'll look into two different areas. One is the testing of assumption and second one is multiple linear regression. What I'll do is in first section, I will explain all of them on how do we test them. In section two, we will conduct multilinear regression and we will generate a report um, and we'll write a comprehensive report on that. So let's get started. All right, here is the file that we're going to work for this uh, tutorial. And there are two simple assumptions uh, for multilinear regression. That's number one, you have continuous dependent variable and number two, you have two or more than two independent variables. Okay. If we have both of them, we are good to go. So first, let us do the test on independent residuals, which is also called the independence of observation. Okay. Analyze regression, linear regression. Job satisfaction goes on dependent. Three of them press shift while selecting. It goes into independent area. Simple statistics uh, over here you can see Darwin Watson okay click on this button and click on continue we are good to go let's click on okay let us see what do we get here here we have the report if you scroll down now we are checking for independence of residuals so we will look into this okay in model summary you can see here Darwin Watson and that's 2.23 zero let us go to the model summary copy the model summary paste it here the select uh, the table from here go to layout click on auto fit let's use the table over here and let's see the summary while using Durbin Watson there is one rule that we need to understand uh, the value between zero to four okay remember observations in multiple linear regression must not be related okay that means they have to be independent now what we can end up over here there was no independence of residues as assessed by Darwin Watson statistic 2.230 of 2.230 okay this is what we have come up let's go and test our let let uh, let me make my life easier you know um let me call it homo uh, let's go and test our homo <laughs> oh god so go to go to analyze uh click on regression <laughs> um <laughs> linear uh Click on save. Okay, that is what I was uh, the, I told you earlier. In predicted uh, variables, what we are going to see is uh, the on standard value that we are going to generate. In residual, we are going to click on is to studentize. Yeah, studentize. <laughs> click on okay. <laughs> okay, we are we, we are not interested in uh, in this chart now. Yeah. SRA, this is uh, studentize residuals, and PRA, this is uh, predicted value. So now what we do to test the um, homo thing is go to graphs, go to legacy dialog uh, and go to scatter. Yeah, simple define and those values that we have generated is the one that we are going to use over here. Okay. Residuals thing goes to Y and on standardize goes to X. You get this chart. Let's copy this chart. Paste it here what this chart shows is if there is homocytosticity then these uh, points are equally distributed okay now how does it look like if uh, it is not homocytosticity and the moment it is not homocytosticity then it is called heterocytosticity god i don't know how do they you know create these names this is how it looks like you know like funnel increasing funnel decreasing funnel or like fan shape so these small points which are the residuals are well spread therefore what we can say there is a homocytosticity now let us uh, put it in writing there was homocytosticity as assessed by visual inspection of a plot of this one student eyes and on standardized okay of studentize residuals 
versus unstandard unstandardized predicted values so this is how we put it in writing in the report okay this is about the homoelasticity of uh, the data that we have the second point is done now let's go to the third one the third of this observation that we are going to make is something called outliers and you are well versed with that basically what these outliers are the unusual points okay and uh, there are three types of unusual points that is outliers high leverage point and highly influential point okay uh, so outlier is one among them so um, in this video we are not going to discuss on high leverage points and high in high um, influential points right so we'll only consider the outliers so in multiple linear regression what do we do is we observe the standardized residuals of greater than uh, plus minus three right uh, that's the rule of thumb so to observe the outliers in our data let us go to our data set go to analyze regression linear in the statistics area you will see something over here do you see this case wise diagnostics okay click on this button and click continue leave as it is click on uh, we don't want to generate data again right click on okay, okay. boom correlation table removed model summary on over coefficient residuals where is the case wise diagnostic now here is it yeah if the cases have standardized residuals less than plus minus three then that table will not be visible over there that table will be visible only if that standardized residual is less than a plus minus three if the residuals are less than plus minus three the table is not visible the information is displayed only if the residuals are greater than plus minus three you got that so we are good with outliers there is no outliers we will be testing our fourth assumption which is linearity in multiple regression we need to establish if there is a linear relationship exists between dependent and independent variables collectively okay that's one and the second one is to establish if a linear relationship exists between dependent variable and each of the independent variables okay so to observe the relationship between dependent and independent variable what we do is we use that pp plot okay uh, which is called like uh, regression partial plot and to observe the relationship between independent and dependent variables collectively what we do is we observe in the scatter plot let's go and let's have a look okay it is taking all of them you can reset you know and or you can continue with that that's not a problem the statistics uh, we, we are not actually interested on this one we'll leave it like that and um, we'll take g residual over here and g predictive over here normal probability produce all partial plot right that's perfectly fine uh, base gear wise uh, click on okay let's copy this paste it here let's make it smaller paste it here what this pp plot shows is whether the relationship between dependent and independent variable okay each of our independent variable exists and what this shows this scatter plot is whether the relationship between dependent and independent variables okay collectively whether it exists or not that is what it is showing okay so simply looking at this pp plot and the scatter plot we can simply say that yes uh, the relation exists between the dependent variables and the independent variables either collectively or each of the independent variables right so uh, let us put it in writing over here so how do you write this there was 
linear routine as assist by fossil regression plots which is this yeah. later on you can give me the figure name figure x and a plot of residues against the predicted values so we are going to test now is the normality in normality what we do is we check whether the residuals or the errors are uh, normally distributed let us go and check the histogram regression linear let's go to plot let's go to plot and click on this histogram okay so what does it say here is standardized residual plot so these are these, these sections are already taken from that area so the moment you click on histogram click on continue click on okay boom now we have here yeah, it shows that almost it is um, very well distributed yeah so to put it in writing the assumption of normality is but as this is histogram. Now, if you want to test by using QQ plot, now because we already have generated this uh, information over here, okay, which is our uh, standardized uh, residuals. So you can go to analyze, descriptive, go to QQ plot, standardized residual, click OK, okay. If you want to QQ plot or you, you want to demonstrate in uh, Instagram, that's perfectly fine, right? And it's up to you how, how you want to uh, present it. So this is the last assumption, which is multicollinearity. Multicollinearity, okay. In what instance do we have this multicollinearity is when we have two or two or more than two independent variables and when those two independent variables are highly correlated with each other okay so wh why why is this concern is because it creates some confusion in understanding that actually which is the variable that is contributing to the variance uh, that we are explaining right so there should not be any multicollinearity between those in independent variables the, therefore we are checking this assumption analyze regression what is the function that we check here is do you remember this collinearity diagnosis okay let's click here that's all we need uh, click continue i don't want to you know uh, keep on creating this uh, data files click okay go to the result and you can see over here in coefficient section you can find this right um let us copy this and let us go here click again layout let's fit to the window Okay, collinearity statistics, and these are the values we have for each of these independent variables. To observe whether there is multicollinearity between our independent variables, we use the standard of uh, 0 0.1. Okay, if the tolerance value is less than 0 0.1, that means uh, there is a collinearity problem in our model. Okay, so we can see here all of these values are higher than. Uh, 0 0.1 therefore there is no collinearity problem within this particular model right this is one method of checking the another method of checking the existence of collinearity method is looking into the correlation data let me take that table over here uh, like i said here 0 0.1 less than 0 0.1 is the benchmark for uh, tolerance value and for here it is 0 0.7 none of these independent variables must be greater than must be greater than 0 0.7 if the values are greater than 0 0.7 then again it shows that there is a collinearity problem in the model okay let's have a look so looking into this table so what you can see here 584 521 372 right all of them are below 0 0.7 now you have two choices whether you want to um, report using uh, collinearity statistics or whether you want to um, uh, report using correlations okay um, let's, let's say for example uh, let us report using tolerance therefore would there was no 
evidence of multiple linearity as assessed by tolerance values greater than 0 0.01.